Hey, Zachimus Prime, aka Zachimus Prime here with another video review. And today I'm reviewing something a little bit different. I, I'd like to continue reviewing things that are a little bit different until we get to the point where maybe they're not a little bit different. Maybe just reviewing strange things is the norm. I actually like reviewing things. If you guys want me to review just like random stuff all the time, I don't know about all the time, but. I was thinking it might be kind of fun to like just like pick up random stuff from time to time to just review it. But I don't know. If you think that's an okay idea, leave me a comment. If you don't, leave me a comment. Otherwise, leave me a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, which is on 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 your on your screen somewhere. But anyhow, what we're reviewing today is the real grade Exia Gundam. And, um, so, the XA Gundam, the Double O series came out, I want to say it came out in 2006, 6 or 7, I don't know. I remember when I saw it, I was thinking that it was a really, really just interesting take on the whole Gundam design. Like, it had a lot of cues from... Gundam designs, but it like kind of like spat in the face of all of them. Um, the uh, the real grade kits that they've been coming out with are they they kind of take that and kind of they even swing their own way off of that. Um, and this is not really much of an exception to that, um, but it's really um, it's really kind of a fun kit. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's like freaking perfect. There's actually a few issues that I had with it, and I will happily point those out. But all in all, it was a very enjoyable build, um, and it was, uh, it's a really cool kit. Um, it's definitely, as a, as a Gundam fan, I can recommend it to someone who is a Gundam fan. Um, but let's get into it a little bit deeper. So in terms of accessories, he comes with his little GN sword gun thingamajig. He comes with a shield. He comes with a bigger sword like that. A smaller sword like that. Oh, don't fall down, buddy. Don't fall down. He comes with these uh, clear pink blades for all of his beam sabers. He's got four beam sabers, so he's got four blades. He comes with an extra two hilts for his beam sabers. These are ones that have this little tab that will fit into his hands. I'll show you that in a bit. He comes with a um, an adapter for um, their Gundam, the Gundam action base. Plus, it's got a little hole where you can put it in your SH Figure Arts. Uh, soul stage like any any of that sort of thing and he comes with another three sets of hands these two that are open like that two that are closed fist like that and two that are holding hands like that and so he comes with with quite the spread of accessories um, just a bunch of stuff on them. But, um, one of the things I want to point out before I get too far into this, um, I haven't put any paint on this figure because I don't really believe in painting. I did take the time to ink up all the panel lines. Um, that's actually kind of a cool technique that I use using a, a Copic marker, just kind of put it all on there and then use some rubbing alcohol to take the excess off and just wipe it clean. Um, leaves behind a, a, a vibrant looking permanent um, line and so it, it looks really great. Um, I did put, oh shoot, I missed it. I missed the decal right here. I did put the decals on him. They are just like basic sticker, clear sheet sticker decals. Um, they've got the, the clear ones like here most of these places, and then they've got foil ones, and you see them there, these reflective ones 
that are most notably in the the cameras, the eyes, and these little GN capacitors all along his limbs. Um, he also comes with a sheet of these clear plastic parts that go in on top of um, these uh, metallic stickers on his thighs, shins. Um, he's got them in his arms right there. And then he's got them sitting out exposed right here. I don't even know if you can see that. Yeah, there it is right there. And so that was interesting. But anyhow, so yeah, no, this is all, all the colors and whatnot on him. That's all, um, that's all color separation built into the model. And um, this model is pretty freaking intricate. Um, it's just it's just well designed well engineered it's it's quite remarkable but anyhow so let's get into it a little bit so his accessories um so gosh i don't even know i'm not used to reviewing these types of figures so i'm gonna i'm kind of going around a little bit please be patient with me <laughs> this is new territory i did review the real grade um Gundam Unicorn. I probably should have reviewed. I should probably should have gone over that again real quick before I did this, just to kind of keep the same style. But so these kits, the way they get done, this is a real great kit. So it starts off with like like an inner frame, and then all the parts go on top of that. And so it's got um, it's got a focus on on posability and and like the engineering stuff in in it. Um, so this is this is even though it's the same scale as their like high grade kits, their little one one forty fourth high grade kits, um, and so it's a whole level of engineering above that. Um, so just everything on this thing moves. So he's got you know ball joint on his head. His head will go all the way around. Oh, there's another spot I forgot to panel line. It will. These little. Shoulder antennas will go up and down. He's got he's got a joint here that moves this shoulder up and down like that. Plus he's got his his actual shoulder joint out here. And that'll go out quite a bit. Oops, that's just my, that part just popped off. So his arm will go out quite a bit. He's got a bicep swivel here just below this. Double joint at the elbow. And it's cool as, oh, I'm losing parts now. As, um, as the parts on his, uh, his arm move around, you can see them like moving and stuff. Let me, let me get back to a point where I can show you that. Like you can see there's there's this little sliding mechanism here and when that slides forward it like retracts all of that it's it's kind of cool he has a joint like inside the forearm right here that wiggles back and forth plus the ball joint at the wrist and then this particular set of hands, so he's got those multiple sets of hands. This particular set is a fully posable set of hands. So it's got um, additional articulation that you wouldn't get on these other ones. Um, and so it will rotate out like that and in like this. It's got a thumb joint here with an additional joint in on the thumb. A finger is on a ball joint with with an additional joint on that. And I'm being really delicate with these because I know that these hands especially are quite delicate. Uh, all three of his other fingers are on a single ball joint. 
and then they also have the official uh, additional joints in there so you can take these and curl them up into some semblance of a fist though I don't I don't feel that it really makes a really good looking fist but I don't know in some ways I think it's better than I always feel that this fist is really flat looking so he's got um, this whole thing rotates in his upper torso goes from side to side there plus he'll go forward and back at this joint here plus another joint down at his waist so there he is all the way forward there he is all the way back he rotates at the waist and he'll rotate basically all the way around he's got these skirt joints are uh, these skirt armors are on ball joints um this is actually one of the things that i don't really like about this is that this is how far you can move his leg up if you don't move the, the skirt arm out of the way if you move the skirt arm out of the way this is how far you can move the leg up you'll notice it's the exact same amount because of the rotation of the skirt armor in relation to the to the rotation point of, his, of its hip is it doesn't get out of the way and so that's frustrating on the back here he's got um these uh beam sabers here can move out they can fold over so he can like grab them these are also on ball joints again they don't moving them out of the way does not um, uh, afford you any more articulation out of the legs which is kind of a bummer but you'd think as well as the rest of this kid is designed that they'd figure out a way around that his uh, hip goes forward that much goes backwards that much he does have about 90 degree 90 percent of a of a van dam uh biceps or leg leg swivel here he's got this like triple jointed knee like there's a joint here a joint here and a joint here and so when you bend this leg which by the way again you'll notice that this part of the armor will move will move with the leg that's cool so with all of this like you can get like a really good bend on that leg but because you can't put it forward very much i don't know exactly what the point of that is uh, a little salty about that i'll be honest with you uh these little ankle armors this one moves up and down this one moves up and down his leg will go forwards that or foot will go forward that much backwards that much there are multiple joints in there to, to facilitate that but this ball joint down here is what gets most of that posability it'll bend at that ball joint but it'll also bend below the ball joint yikes you can definitely tell this is a model and not an action figure because when you play with it some of these parts kind of like to come up like to try and fall off so decent amount of ankle articulation there he also has uh, a toe joint here and a toe toe joint here and so a big degree of posability on this um, let me get into some of the other um, action features here of course he's got four beam savers here these are all removable um, off of their mounts these mounts are all designed to move around um, so that you know he can grab them better these ones wiggle about as well um the beam sabers so when they come up these are the display ones that go on the figure they're just like that you can put them in say like his holding hand we're just gonna pull out a holding hand you can fit them in there no problem but um actually it even holds that pretty tightly but these holding hands if you pull this apart right here have got like this little hole in them and they're designed to work with this little peg system and this was not a feature these these alternate hands these fixed posed holding hands were not a feature in the early real grade kits and as a result the early real grade kits couldn't ha hold hardly anything um so that's what that looks like in his hand 
and you can take this just pull this off from the ball joint there and put that in like that stick a beam saber in there that's for one of the long ones that's for one of the short ones Generally though, what you're probably going to end up putting in that hand is his, is his GN sword. Let me show you that. We're going to pull this out. So this as well has got the little tab system in it. Let me get all this out of the way. You can see the tab right there. So we're going to put, we're going to build his hand around that handle like so and then what we're gonna do because this has got this little connector thing is on like the slider sliding thing here so this has actually got a fairly large amount of uh, movement and articulation on it plus this little gun is not just attached with a peg it's actually got this little hinge thing that moves about so there's quite a bit of range of motion on that little attachment itself so we're gonna put this on there like that this tab is going to fit into that slot there. And then we're just going to kind of maneuver this around until it works out. That gets folded up there. And that's mostly how it goes. I just accidentally undid it. That's mostly how it goes. So there it is, like that. Um, similarly, and I'm going to take this little hand off because uh, that hand makes me nervous. I'm going to replace it with this fist even though the fist looks a little weird similar to how this works here there's this little part here with the peg this little slot on it or this tab that goes into this slot and that just attaches right onto there um, for the shield here so it's got a rotation point oh it doesn't rotate there it um you can pull this off and you can attach it into um, three different places Three, maybe four. No, nope, three different places. Like that. I just keep it in the middle because why not? Go for the go for the median measurement all the time. And so there he is with his shield and his little his little gun thing. It's not much of a gun, it's just this little tiny like pistol-y looking thing here. But then you can take this and you can flip this out. And so now his gun has become a sword. And then also, if you detach this part from down here and bring that up like that, now it's a sword with a more traditional, um, you know, stance to it in relation to its handle. So that's cool. And if we take this off and so these handles here, they don't have a tab on them so they're not going to be compatible with um they're not going to be compatible with these hands straight up because these will i mean these are these hands have no gripping power whatsoever because everything's ball joints and whatnot yeah like no gripping power whatsoever but you can just take this and drop it straight into one of these holding hands and the holding hand will actually hold it quite well not like super well because even still it 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 feels like it wants to hold it at a weird angle but is that the front or the back i may have just put it in backwards yeah like so so there it is like that So there he is with the swords. 
I'm not sure how I feel exactly. I mean, they're kind of cool that they're chrome plated. Uh, I guess I'm just kind of used to them. In the earlier models, this was done up in gray plastic, and I was like, yeah, that works out. But um, these do store on him as well. Yeah, come on. Get out. This is actually kind of a cool little gimmick. So if you take this part here and you kind of hook a fingernail on this like little gray panel up here on this hip armor, you can yoink on that. Oh, come on. Maybe I'll just use this. I don't really recommend using that. Maybe I shouldn't use it. I don't want to scratch up the uh, the chrome on that. Maybe I'll use this. I'm not going to scratch up the clear pink. That's not that's not thin enough. There we go. So that comes out, and then this little tab comes around, and then you push it back in. And that gives you a peg that you can attach these onto. So you can actually have all of his equipment um, on them all at once. And that's actually kind of cool. But yeah, um, it's a pretty decent figure. Um, one of the things that I do like about this figure is his decals. His decals, like, you'll see these ones here and here, like that. These are, um, like, precision cut to that specific area there. And um, Bondi really did a good job with that. Like, it really uh, works out well. Um, there's, just, there's just a lot about this kit that's really, that's really top-notch. That being said, there's also some things about this kit that I think are a bit iffy. I've gone over some of the issues I have with the posability, especially on the, the, the hips here. Um, I did have, let's see if I can get it to work. Let me zoom in. You'll see that there's a crack. Hopefully, uh, the resolution is all crap because I'm zoomed in. There's a crack right here. This came like basically as soon as I put that together. And then on the back side, this one's gonna be even harder to see. There's also a little crack right in this area here. And this is just, I put it together and just the, the, the plastic cracked. And I don't know why I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't drop it, I didn't break it, I didn't push it harder than it should have been. I didn't put it together and say, whoops, I screwed up and then try to take it apart. Like, yeah. So that's kind of, that's kind of frustrating. Um, I mean, it's definitely not my favorite real grade. Um, I think that'll definitely have to go to the Unicorn Gundam for now. Um, but it, it was, it was a fun build. If you can pick one of these up for, you know, 20 or 30 bucks, like it's definitely worth you know, taking the time to go and deck it out and sit it on your shelf. Hey, you're not going to get the play value out of it that you'll get out of, like, the Robot, Do Robot Damashi figures. By the way, leave me a comment if you want me to review the Robot Damashi Axia. I have one of those as well. Um, but I enjoyed it. I think that they're fun. I'm going to stick it on my shelf, and I'm probably not going to do much with it because that's basically how it goes with models. But... Thanks everybody for watching. I know that this is different than normal. I promise my next review is going to be a uh, transformer again, if you hated this. And if you like this, then I promise that I've got more reviews of other figures coming up in the future. So thanks everyone for watching. You guys are fantastic. Everyone be good to each other and have a great day. I'll see ya.